It's a privilege. It's an honor to come and be gathered in your presence. Mm. Father, Lord, we acknowledge, we decree, and we declare that our gathering is unto you. And because yes, of Lord. this, Lord, we give you the pride of place. Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Jesus Christ, come and take full control of today's service. Help every aspect as you have been doing from you know, earlier this morning. But help us so that, Lord, your will will be done all the way to the end. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen, amen, and amen. I welcome all of you to yet another glorious Sunday at God City Assembly. Uh, it's been an interesting uh, last couple of days as my leaders and I have been uh, firefighting a few things. But hey, th those are the things that make me realize that God is with us. <laughs> amen. People think that when trouble comes, especially when that trouble comes from the enemy, that, that means they're doing something wrong. No, 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 no. It means that you are a threat to the enemy. That's what that means. Because it's not going to disturb those who are not disturbing him. It's not going to disturb those who, don't, who are not worth anything. It will go after those glorious children of God. But anyway, we give God all the glory as we continue to win and become victorious on our side. I'm just so grateful. I'm really, really pumped up uh, this morning. And that's because just like as in finances and prayer, this is another month that I really relish. <laughs> it is the month of the anointing. Glorious to the God, glorious to, to our God. The month of the anointing. Uh, and uh, when the Lord was giving this to us, they were, my mind was going in different directions because uh, I, I know from personal experience, which I believe to be relevant across the kingdom for so many decades, that quite a lot of people don't fully understand what the anointing is. And that can be uh, discovered from the fact that a lot of people tend to uh, misuse the term anointing and tend to arrogate wrong things to it when they are talking. I'm talking about born again children of God, which is why it's only right for me to kickstart this month with the topic, what is the anointing? <laughs> what actually really is the anointing? Uh, one, of the, one of the things I've always heard people say over time is that they go around saying things like, that person is more anointed than that person. <laughs> and that demonstrates uh, ignorance. It demonstrates a uh, lack of knowledge in, 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 in people's understanding of what the anointing is. Because that statement is not true. <laughs> it has never been true. It will never be true. Uh, there are two measures in, in the anointing. The Jesus' measure and the rest of us. Let me, let me repeat myself. There are only two measures of anointing. Jesus' measure and then the rest of us measure. Uh, but we will we'll get to it. So I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that with the help of the Holy Spirit in the next however minute, that the Lord will speak to me from his throne in heaven and that what you will learn will add value to your experience with God in the name of Jesus. So what else, what, what then is the anointing? I've started with this nice picture of the anointing oil. And the reason why I've started from there is because when anointing was first mentioned in the Bible, it was, uh, it was mentioned in the company of the anointing oil. It was so special that God actually gave the children of Israel an, an ingredient of how to make it. You know, when heaven starts to uh, prescribe and, 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 and dictate, then you know that there must be something to that thing. So he didn't just leave them to their own devices. He, he gave them the ingredients to make the olive oil. Take this, mix it with this herb and this herb and this herb. Now, why did he do that? He was preparing them 
for where he was taking all of us. Everything in the Old Testament was pointing to where we were going. They were four shadow, four means before. So they were like shadow things that were telling us where the real thing is coming. So what was the anointing oil used for? Let's start from Leviticus chapter 8, verses 10 and 12. It was used to consecrate. So in this instance, it says also Moses took out the anointing oil and anointed the tabernacle and all that was in it and consecrated them. And then verse 12 says, and he poured some of the anointing oil on Aaron's head and anointed him to consecrate him. So without a shadow of a doubt, the anointing oil was, 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 uh, was ordained by God for the children of Israel to start to use to anoint individuals and to anoint things that were being consecrated unto the Lord. What does consecration mean? Set apart, separated reserved for God. So it was more like branding, but on a very elevated level. You know, um, many of us, including myself, we, we, we used to get into designer wears and we wanted people to know that, you know, we're either wearing a Tommy or we're wearing a Rafi or we're wearing a Gucci. Those are brands, those are brands. Glory to Jesus, I wear my own brand now, you know, I'm done it, uh, you know, but the bottom line is the olive oil was used to say this person or this thing is separated unto God, does not belong to anyone else. God owns this thing, this person and this thing. And so it was okay for us to anoint individuals into an office. It was okay to anoint kings into their office. It was okay to anoint things, your house, your car, your whatever you, you, know, you want to consecrate unto the Lord. That's okay. And there's nothing wrong with it and it's not a sin and God has no issue with it even up till now. You know, uh, how do I know that? Because even into the New Testament in the book of James, he still said, look, if anyone is sick among you, let the elders come and anoint them and pray for them, and, they are, and, they are that, and, and those people will be healed. So God, God has no issue whatsoever with the anointing. Um, so, pardon me, sorry, uh, I was having some international calls disrupting this. Uh, I, hope, I hope it stops. Um, so I, I just wanted to, to, make it sure, to, to, to make sure that we know that anointing was also used to consecrate people and things unto God. Hallelujah. So what was the anointing? Let's go to Isaiah chapter 10, verse 27. How was the anointing described, especially in the Old Testament? It, it shall come to pass in that day that his body shall be taken away from off thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. This was God preparing us for Jesus that was coming. That one of the roles of Jesus coming was to lift the body and to destroy the yoke. So it wasn't just marking or branding an individual or something. He was placing the power of God upon that person or that thing in a way that Bodings or yokes or evil of any description have no place in it. Uh, thank God I'm, 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 I'm a preacher and I'm also a teacher. And one, some of the subjects I teach are, are sciences. And physics has made it clear, darkness is not the absence of light. A lot of people think that, oh, when there's no light, then it's dark. No, when light shines, darkness has to hide. Wow, I hope somebody got free from what I just said now. Darkness is not the absence of light. No, when light comes, it chases darkness away. This is science, I'm telling you, not religion. That is what the scientists believe, that light dispels darkness, chases it away. So if something has God in it, 
Satan can't coexist in it. It's impossible. He may try to influence it. He may try to harass it. He may try to upset it. But it cannot coexist in that same place where light exists. So anointing consecrates completely, validates completely, separates an individual or something unto God. It means that that belongs to God. So take your hand off. Don't even look. Don't even dare look at him, you evil entity of any description. But Isaiah was trying, Prophet Isaiah was trying to make us know that that is what the anointing is for. The anointing from God is to lift burdens and destroy yokes. That is why it is extremely important. I'm going a bit ahead of myself, but it's just important to say it at this junction. To be anointed for whatever it is you are doing. To be anointed for whatever it is you're doing. Because without the anointing, it's just sweat. Even with the anointing, there'll still be some sweat dropping off your brows. Yeah, don't let me give you any wrong impression here. Yeah. Because of the anointing, everything will just be going swimmingly. Anybody who says that, I don't completely believe. I'm sorry. I don't want to insult anybody. But even with the anointing, there'll still be some sweat dripping off your hair, eyebrows. Yeah, but God takes most of the weight from you. So imagine trying to do it without being anointed for it. That's why it's almost like standing on the treadmill and running very fast. We are not going anywhere quickly. So anointing is extremely crucial to anything that God is involved in. So if we fast forward to this anointing that came in 4 John chapter 2, verses 25 to 27, and it says, and this is the promise that he has promised us eternal life. These things are written to you concerning those who try to deceive you, but the anointing which you have received from him, capital letter H, from him abides in you and you do not need that anyone teach you, but as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things and is true and is not a lie and just as it has taught you, you will abide in him. So that anointing became something that Jesus came with so that we will know the truth so that nobody needs to be teaching us ABCD anymore because we have that witness on our inside. Look, I've been opportune to, to raise you know, children with my wife and I've raised you know, some siblings you know, growing up and, 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 and other people's children. Even before children can talk, they have an idea of between good and bad. They may not be able to articulate it, but they know that this is not good. They may not have a full understanding of what the implications are, but there's just an innate thing in everyone that makes you know that this thing I'm doing is good or this thing I'm doing is not good. And so the anointing came to make sure that there was witness inside of us that that eternal life resides with us. Just hang in there with me. That's why John 15, 5 now starts to make more sense in the light of what we have just read in 1 John chapter 2. He says, I am divine. This is Jesus talking right now. When he came and he was talking to his disciples just before he left. I am divine. You are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. One of, the, one of the blessings God has given me as an individual is that I have the ability to make complex things sound very simple. And until I did my postgraduate in the university, when a professor made me realize that is an high level of intelligence. I didn't know that was what it was. If I'm looking at things, I don't complicate stuff. I just break it down so into simple unit. And that is the way I read my Bible. I don't go around to try and spin off something that doesn't exist. The hieroglyphic is, the, no, what did God say? He said, without him, we can do nothing. So what grammar do we want to speak again? It is as clear as day. You can't even worship God without God. You can't worship him without him. You can't pray to him without his help. You cannot connect with him without his help. 
Simple as ABC. That's why I pray prayer like, Lord, I don't feel like praying. Help me in this prayer. Massive prayer point. I don't go there pretending, oh, Lord, I love you. Uh, you are the greatest. No, Lord, I don't feel like praying right now. Or like life has been sucked out of me. I don't even know. I'm just frustrated right now. But I won't talk to you. So you are going to have to help me to talk to you. Simple. Nobody on earth can do anything for God without God's help. It is impossible. It is probable, but it's impossible. And you just find people trying. Well, that's why you find anything that involves so much stress and I'm toiling. And I'm like, hey, how can somebody who manufactured the entire universe in six days? I'll be working for him and I'll be sweating. Lord, make it easy for me. Because you can take this load off me. I can't, I can't pick up this load. I can't. I haven't got the strength for this. In, in recent times, the Lord has been leading me to show my leaders things that are going on in the background because I've had to shield it from them for years. They were, they were, they were surprised, almost stupefied. <coughs> you, this has been going on? I said, yeah. Ah, you still saying? Because he's the one helping me. If, if he's not, that's why I have to be sure he sent me. Because if he didn't send me, oh, well, let me change direction. Ah. You can't do anything for God without God's help. It's impossible. Impossible. So let's move on. That's why Jesus promised power. In Acts chapter 1 verse 8. That's why he promised power. Because he said it even in the book of Luke. You know, there's a version of this in the book of Luke. He said, do not leave Jerusalem uh, and Judea until the power has come. That is, don't even think of starting anything until you have received power for it. Because you, you, there can only be one outcome, failure, if you do not receive power for it. And that is what that was saying there, that, and you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in jerusalem in all judea and samaria and to the end of the earth now listen to me let's look at ourselves i'm african we like looking at ourselves in the eyes when matters has got to this point the argument in the body of christ the argument the school of thoughts in the body of christ is that oh the holy spirit came on the day of pentecost so that's it done so if that was it, I put to anybody who may be thinking along those lines, how come some people are opening 10,000 churches in COVID and some of us can't even run two churches? I put it to anybody listening to me here. There's an empowerment from heaven you need for whatever he has commissioned for you to do. And you only succeed when you have got that empowerment. And the empowerment doesn't always come from day one when you were sent. Thank God my wife is on this broadcast. She knows me more than anybody else, I would like to think. And it's not me doing this. This is not Jide Daniel here. Jide Daniel cannot do this. I don't have the temperament for this. It's God that is doing this through me. It's God that will make me listen to somebody you've been sent to help, insulting you, and you will not reply. It's only God that can do that. It's only God making you listen to people being ungrateful on all sides. You feel like punching them in the mouth. I, I know a lot of people like to pretend when they're preaching. I can't. I'm stripped bare when, I'm, when I preach. So I'm talking to you from the depths of my heart. I feel like punching them in the mouth. It's only God that stops it. People will just be saying rubbish back at you. People you've been praying for for months. We turn around and say, what have you done for me? Ha! Jesus. You? It's only God. So don't, don't let any man boast. We need power. That power doesn't come from day one. I'm not the same person that God called into ministry in 1994. I just had a flat no. Now, yeah, my wife was pregnant. We didn't have any money. There was no food to eat. They are calling me to go and pay to the old world. What kind of calling is this one? 
send me, send me food first. Send me, let me eat food. This food, let my wife that's pregnant ask, let, him, let her eat food for before you start sending me to the uttermost part of him. I, I was foolish then because you know, I was ignorant. But at least I was truthful. I'm not going to preach nothing. Send me food first. He, he, he called me at 31st of December, the night a, a, a dear friend, you know, may so rest in peace, has gone on to be with the Lord now, just gave us a massive disappointment. So I was, I was downcast. I was, I was broken. I'm like, just, Lord, what kind of life is this? One? Then he said, oh, you go and preach to the world. Yeah, preach to who? I, preach to me first. Let preach to me and be busy first. The old world, what do I want to do with the old world? Me, my old world is still in, in tatters here. That's why for eight years, I did nothing about it. They will call me to come and minister in churches in Nigeria. I will go. God's power will fall down. I will run back to my life. I'm not doing this thing. Eight years, I did nothing. I'm just, let me get my life together. It, it, I, I, I'm not saying this to look like a good person. I'm breaking it down so I can help somebody listening to me wherever they listen to this broker. There's nothing of God that is easy. It's God that makes it easy. I could remember, you know, sitting in a fellowship, you know, years back and listening to the preacher and saying in my head, I can preach better than that. Hey, my today self has gone back to that, my old self. Ah, GJ, you were very foolish, oh. You were very foolish back then. You think it's all by preaching? It takes lots more. And it's only God that supplies the vital ingredients. So as, what I'm trying to say in a longabout way is this. When we receive Jesus into our lives, he comes to live inside of us. You have eternal life. If you die, most likely you go to, you know, be with him and reign with him forever. I said most likely because Jesus is the judge. I'm not the judge. I'm not privy to your private thoughts and decisions. But at least you stand a high chance. You will make it. But before you enter into any service or commission, you need to be activated. And a lot of people jump that. And once they jump it, they are not fully equipped for what they're doing. Now they're, now they're, they're over, over, over their heads in it now. Whenever any pressure comes, like it happened this last couple of days, I just go back to the person who soon sent me on an assignment. Daddy, what's happening here? Help me. And he's obliged to answer me because he's the one that sent me. So I'm, I, I put it forward to you that the Holy Spirit coming upon, did you see Peter on the day of Pentecost? The Peter before that was denying Jesus was the one that stood up and spoke to thousands of people. Those are, those are different individuals. Do you want to say they didn't have God in them? You didn't Jesus call them? Didn't they walk around with Jesus all, all, for those three and a half years? Didn't Jesus send them forth to go and heal the sick and cast out demons? They were already impacted to do stuff but they needed to be activated. They needed to be activated. And, and now let us, let, let, let's go to Matthew chapter three, verse 11. That's what John the Baptist was saying, but many people did not understand. He says, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he who con he was coming after me is mightier than I, who sanders I'm not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Everybody keeps talking about the Holy Spirit. They forget the fire. They forget the fire. He baptizes you with the Holy Spirit and, because if the Holy Spirit came with fire, there's no need for and. And is conjunction. Something that comes with something, it's a handbag. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire is that fire that keeps you going against all discouragement is that fire that keeps you waking up 4 a.m so you can bless other people not because you are narcissistic not because you are egotistical but that, that fire won't let you sleep is that fire that makes you keep going when the fruits are not obvious is that fire that makes you stay consistent even when nobody sees you is that fire that helps you? So let me just split it down as a teacher. Let's make it simple again. 
So I'm saying to you that when Jesus came and when he was living, he sent the Holy Spirit to anoint us. He sent the Holy Spirit to anoint us. And the anointing is divided broadly into two. The gift of the Spirit and the fruit of the Spirit. The gift of the Spirit and the fruit of the Spirit. Before I go into them individually, let me just you know, explain a bit more. First Corinthians chapter 12 is where you find the gifts being mentioned a lot. There are other parts, but that's the major places where it's mentioned a lot. And then some uh, allusion was made to it in First Corinthians chapter 14. But First Corinthians 12 is the chapter for gift of the spirit. Did you hear the word gift? That means you've done nothing to deserve it. It was just given to you. Gift is a gift of the spirit. Gift. People give people gift. Not because, oh, I, I'm such a good man, so I get, no. So you can sing. So what did you do to get the vocal voice that you are using now? Did you have to go on top of the mountain and roll on the floor four times? So you can teach the word of God. And what university did you go to to go and learn how to teach the word of God? So you, you are a prophet. Uh, so what did you do? I remember prophesying at age of five. So what did I do at the age of five to qualify to be a prophet? It's a gift. It's a gift. And the second one is what? Fruits. Fruit is born after seed has been planted and then it sprouts. So it's like a manifestation of the end of a gestation the end of a process. And I, and I say this to you, that when Jesus, when you accept Jesus into your life, as you start to walk with him and in him and abide in him, then his fruit starts to show. What are his fruit? That example I gave you, that the former Jide will have punched somebody in the mouth, but today's Jide is, is interceding for them. Now I'm bearing fruit. Fruits that I didn't have before. But it's, it's sprouting on the inside of me because of the Holy Spirit abiding inside of me. That, don't get me wrong. It doesn't mean I'm completely gone. I'm, there's still a little bit of me in there. I still want to do the punching. But I, I have to hold myself back and say, eh? Is it because I'm dealing with Jesus? These people are saying all these stupid things to me. If you know, I'm on Facebook. You know, the Lord led me to my Facebook through a mentor, uh, Apostle George Akalono, about 12, 13 years ago, and I thank God for that. So it, it's expanded the riches of our ministry beyond what any physical attempts could have done. But if you know the insult I receive on the social media, I just say, eh? If that had been before, the person would just open their door, I'm standing in front of them like FBI. I found you, I found where you live. Ah. Well, thank, thank God for Jesus. Anyway, so the anointing is split broadly into gifts and fruits. Gifts and fruits. So let's go a bit more into it. We'll have the whole month to look at it, but this is just a, an introduction. So let's start with the fruits. Galatians 5, 22 to 23. Anybody who is listening to me, please, I'm begging you. This is how you know those who have Jesus inside of them. They may, have, they may not have all of them, they may have them at varying degrees, but if you cannot see any of this in anyone, Jesus is not in them. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering. Ah, man, don't suffer long ago. Eh? Long suffering, kindness, goodness faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such, there's no law. No, nobody has got all of this together, so no, no, nobody can make both. But this will be our aspiration, that as we walk with Jesus, let his fruit be born in us. Let the things we do show in us. Let everything we do 
continue to be seen by others. I, I keep telling people, I know you've heard me a couple of times. Can you preach Jesus without opening the Bible? That is the challenge for a child of God. Can you, can people see Jesus in you without you putting any cross on your neck or opening any Bible? Can they look at you and say, ah, there's something different about this person. Something pleasantly different about this person. So I go ahead of myself again. What do we have today? People who can sing, but they are, they are, they are more mean than Satan. But give them a microphone, they can sing. People who preach the house down, but go and see them at the back. They are worse than Satan. So the gift is operating, but the fruits are not showing. And here is the crux of the issue in the body of Christ. So people think that because they are gifted, it means they are just anointed. No, it's just one part of the anointing. Where about the fruits? Where are the fruits? Where are the fruits? Some people would dissect faith like there's no tomorrow, but the, kind, the faith is not working for them in their own personal life. E? So you just came to teach me all these beautiful things. You are not even using it. So I, and I'm saying this under the anointing, please forgive me. All my life, since I came into the kingdom, that has been my secret. I don't follow people who are popular. Who are, no, I, I, I watch out for their fruits. If I'm not convinced by their fruits, I don't care how popular you are. I don't want to know you. God bless you. How do they treat their family? How do they treat other people? How do they treat people they think are not up to them? Those are the fruits. One of my mentors well, was quoted as saying uh, that he met another man of God, which I won't mention, he doesn't glorify God, a popular Nigerian man of God, and they traveled first class together and he greeted him good morning and that guy didn't even reply. They're both men of God. They're both popular Nigerian men of God. So it's not like, oh, one person is innocuous, it's not known. No, this person, if, they, if I mention their names, you know them straight away, first time, at least most Nigerians will. And they met in a first class, you know how small first class is, but those who don't know, first class is not very big, because not many people can afford it. So they, you will see each other like this, it's just that like you are in your own space, everybody is having fun. And just ah, this, another man of God that I, you know, that's popular, just ah, good morning, sir. He didn't reply. And you are representing Jesus. And you are, you are and millions, millions of people are following you. So let's, let's, let's dive a little bit now into the gift because this is one of the most misunderstood things in my world and in my sphere. And who knows, it might be similar in your experience. First Corinthians 12, I start from verses four to six. It says, there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but it's the same God who works all in all. It's the same God who works all in all. So let's move on to uh, verses seven and 11. He says, but the manifestation of the spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. Nobody is supposed to hide their gift or keep it to their congregation or just keep it to their four walls. It's for, the, it's for all of us to benefit from, to profit from. I love Brother Tunde Arawande's version of, of worship. So every time I listen to a CD or I ask him you know, to, 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 to help us with worship, he takes me to the presence of God. Now I'm benefiting from his gift. That's how, that is what it's supposed to be. So there are some men of God I listen to. They're not very many. As I'm listening, I'm, I'm, I'm almost taking notes. Even my wife is shocked. Because God forgive me for a very long time. I couldn't find any notes to write. But in recent time, God has led me to people that they're talking, I'm writing notes. And now I'm benefiting from their gifts. 
if anything I'm saying is blessing you, now you are benefiting from my gift. That's the whole idea of it. It's not for us to not go and form Brother Tunde's uh, Pentecostal International Church, and then the rest of us can access his gift now. Which means that if we are doing something in our church, I should be able to call, please come and help us in this area. Call another person, come and help us in this area. And then the, the body of Christ is blessed. So that's the anointing, that's, that's the gift. That's what the gift is for. Okay, let's keep going. I'm just, I, I, I do, ah, Jesus help me. And why has he done that, right? No, he said, no, let's do verse 11 first. But one and the same spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as he wills. Not because you've done anything. I wasn't made a prophet because, oh, Jide was very good at five. God said, this guy should be good as a prophet. As he wills. So don't let anybody come and start boasting now. It's God that is distributing this stuff. What's my evidence? Because I hear somebody doubting in their mind. What's my evidence? Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5. Before you are formed in your mother's womb, I knew you and I and called you and appointed you as a prophet to the nations before you are formed. Don't let us, don't let us belabor scripture. It's clear. Before you are formed in your mother's womb, I knew you and I called you and I appointed you and I to, to become a prophet to the nations. It's God that distributes it. He's the one that does it. And I'm sure there'll be a higher level of understanding beyond our end why he does it. But it's not on this level for anybody to be making any boast. So why how come some people that have spectacular gifts think they are the only ones anointed? So somebody lays hands on somebody, they are healed now. The whole body of Christ is kneeling down before them. He's just been gifted. And his gift is supposed to serve the rest of us. Like our gift is supposed to serve other people. So in people's minds, and over the years, I've had all these mutterings in the body of Christ. Ah, that man is so anointed. He just laid hands on 10 people and they got healed. So that means you that your, your gifting is scribing. You are not anointed because you are not laying hands on anybody. They're not falling down. That's how we have missed out on nuggets, on gifts in the body of Christ, amazing gifts in the body of Christ. We have, we have despised them. We have underestimated them because they don't have spectacular gifts like the people we think are anointed. Because of this misunderstanding about the anointing. That's why our ministry subscribes to Andrew Womack's ministry. You need to see that guy ministry. Doesn't touch anybody, doesn't do any drama. He sits down and teaches the word of God Miracle is happening, like Daddy Higgins of, 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 of all times. If you, if you go to any Andrew Omax meeting, you want to see him after the meeting, you will see him. There's no bodyguard. There's no soldier. There's nobody carrying gun. The person that just did this, that God just did all these miracles around him, he's there shaking your hand the next two minutes, talking to you like a friend. Because he knows it's God doing it, not him. And now we've built shrines onto men and women across the world, onto human beings because of their gifts. Because we don't understand what the anointing is about. And why has God done it? Verse 28 of 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And God has appointed this in the church. First apostles, second prophet, third teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings. Please pause and read the next one, helps. If many people are reading this verse, they're only reading miracles and healings and apostles and everything. Can you see that in the same verse, it says what helps administrations, variations of tongues or varieties of tongues even, I stand to be corrected. And it goes on and on and on. But everybody wants to be in front. Everybody wants to hold the microphone. Everybody wants to be head of something, uh, director of something. 
What of if that's not your calling? He does that because, you know, he, he has just spread that gift everywhere. So the ones with the spectacular gifts are, are, are coveted. I met a, a, a man of God somewhere in South Africa years ago, and he saw me as I was ministering in a church in Johannesburg. And he came to me and said, do you charge for this thing you are doing? I said, charge what? He said, no, you should be charging people before you prophesy to them. I said, I, I don't think I can do that. He said, that's what he does. That's what he does. You, before I prophesy to you, give me X amount of money. I said, ah, that, that doesn't go with the scripture. Your gift is meant to serve others. And another good news I have here in verse uh, 31, he says, but earnestly desire the best gift. And yet I show you a more excellent way. There are two important points. This is the last verse in 1 Corinthians 12. He says, you can desire a better gift because it's a gift. You can pray to God and he will give you, you know, what else it is that you desire if your motives are right. But then he now put a big proviso that many people miss out when they're reading 1 Corinthians 12. You remember that the old, the, the, the old scripture was not put into chapters. We put it into chapters to make it easier for us to read. So they are just one flowing thing. So the last verse of a so-called chapter is actually the precursor to the next, to the first verse of the of, of, of the next chapter. So, what is the next chapter after First Corinthians 12? First Corinthians 13 says, if you like, have the voice of angels. If you don't have love, you are nothing. He has put it into perspective. So, all these people that are doing like this because of their gift, they've already nullified themselves. So let me round it up and bring it back together. I know a lot has been said. What is the anointing? The anointing of God is the body removing, yoke destroying power of God that is given unto us so that we can carry out our functions in ministry. And it also produces fruit inside of us and confers on us, gifts to help us discharge our godly function. That's what the anointing is. Yoke destroying, body carrying power of God that makes it possible to carry out our ministry functions. It produces fruits inside of us and confers on us gifts to help us discharge our godly function. So you can imagine somebody that has been asked to go and uh, open 10,000 churches. He's going to need some gifts, man. So God knows the measure to give to that individual. Somebody that's just sitting next to you know, his two families, he, he has his own level of giftings too. So because of the lack of understanding of anointing, we started grading people. If you have time, read 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and 1 Corinthians chapter 6. I don't have time to go into them. But he now laid down, Apostle Paul now laid down and said, who are you to say one man of God is better than another man of God? Is it not God that gives everything out? So somebody who has a spectacular gift now, we now play to a point. Everybody thinks he's so much more anointed. The rest of us are not. That's not true. That's not true. When Nathaniel came to Jesus, what did Jesus say about him? A man in, the, in, in whom there's no guile. Even his people, his people around him didn't even know who he was. Jesus testified of his character. A man in whom there's no guile. Even the guy was astounded. Oh, do you know me? Where have you read my file? When God told me, and I, I've said this before, and I'm repeating it, I said that Bible study. He said, my greatest generals, they are not on TV. People don't even know them. That's what God told me. He said, when you get to heaven, you find that some of my biggest generals were not even known worldwide. They were not known globally. They were just there representing me on earth, 100%. So, we are all anointed. If you are a born again child of God, you are anointed. You are anointed. All it remains for some people is to be activated into their offices. And then God starts to provide you with what you need to function in that office. And that anointing is, comes from the Holy Spirit. Inside of us, it produces fruit. Upon us, it activates us to service as it gives us gifts. That's what anointing is. Hallelujah. We are all anointed. 
anoint, we are all anointed. One of, one, of, one, of, one of the people that have been closest to me over the years, my wife's very close friend, Sister Nike. I watch her. She doesn't talk very much. She doesn't preach. She doesn't, you know. But that put her with women. You will see what will happen in five minutes. Put Sister Nike with women, any set of women from anywhere, black, white, red, or yellow. Watch what will happen in five minutes. Pass an anointing. No, it's, not easy, no, it's not easily reproducible. He inf she influences women. But in church, she doesn't talk. She does, she's not grabbing microphone with anybody. We have to force her to go and do praise and worship sometimes when we, are, when we are falling short of praise and worship people. We're all anointed. But what are you anointed for? Why don't you ask the person distributing the gift? I can't logistically start a church in every major city in the UK. Am I called to do that? <coughs> Am I called? Am I called by God to do that? Because if I'm not, where's the anointing to do that? I'm going to have to rely on skills now. May the Lord help us and give us better understanding in the name of Jesus. I hope I've been able to be used by God as a vessel to bless one person regarding this subject today. It's a very, 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 very important subject in the body of Christ. In the next few weeks, we'll be going and delving into the actual fruits of the gift, uh, fruits of the spirit and the actual gifts of the spirit and what the anointing does. And then we'll round it up by looking at how to keep your fire burning, how to put the fire on your gift. Because many people don't see, don't know how to do that. They're anointed, they're gifted, but they don't know how to set their gift on fire. And I hope that you'll be blessed by this, by this series. Now we want to take some time to take our offering. Sorry, Pastor Sam. Oh my God. Father Lord, I pray for Pastor Sam right now. This man has stood by me all these years, especially by this vision. I forgot this, but he already knew he has provided it. Father Lord, continue to fill the gaps in his own life in the name of Jesus. It's a time for us to, to give unto God. And uh, it's part of our belief, our tenets as God's children, that giving is an essential part of what we do as an act of worship unto God, as an act of obedience unto God. And he is the one that will reward those who obey his commandments. So I give you just a couple of minutes to, to prepare your offering. The details are on there. If you want to pay straight to the bank or PayPal or Cash App for those who are in America, that works as well. Or PayPal for anybody, that works as well. Glory to God. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. The Lord has asked me to pray with everyone. He said, I have not concluded. I still need to pray. So let me just take this time to, to, to pray. Father, Lord, for those who have heard me right now, who in their heart and mind are trusting you to be where they need to be exactly. I join my faith with theirs that today, according to the power of the Holy Spirit, they will be released into the fullness of their ministries in the name of Jesus, into the fullness of where they should be in the name of Jesus. My Lord and my God, clear every doubt in their mind. Let your fire fall upon them in the name of Jesus. The fire that you set me up on. 25 years ago, Lord, let that fire burn over them in the name of Jesus. Let the, let the zeal of your house consume each and every one of them so that they can fit in into where you have placed them. And then your house can be a beautiful edifice. And, 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 and you may take all the glory, Father Lord, as our lives exude this sweet smelling aroma. Father Lord, I worship you. I give you all the glory that today from this topic, Father Lord, lives will be set free. Ministries will be released. Uh, arguments will be settled. Father Lord, confusion will be cleared in the mighty name of Jesus. Father Lord, we thank you. We give you all the glory. We bless the offering and those who have given. 
we know that they receive their reward from our high priest Jesus, who takes our tithes and offerings. Father Lord, we thank you. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Amen. All through this month, you don't want to miss the service and the Bible study. It's going to be explosive as other people start to contribute their own portion into it. That's what brings our Bible study alive. It's not just one person talking. It's when people start asking questions or they're giving their own commentaries on it, then something bigger happens. So you don't want to miss it this month because I know there will be questions and I know there will be contributions as well. Our Bible studies are Wednesdays, uh, 7 p.m. GMT. Uh, that will be 6 p.m. Ghana, 7 p.m. Nigeria. That will be uh, 9 p.m. Kenya. Uh, and and uh, you, you don't want to miss it. That will be 2 o'clock Eastern, Eastern, Eastern Time, New York and, and Baltimore. But you don't want to miss it. And until we come your way next week, I think it's my wife preaching, or both of us, I don't remember, but we'll be looking at the gifts of the spirit a bit more in depth. You don't want to miss 10.30 GMT next Sunday. Until then, thank you for tuning in and God bless you.